Hi, this is Talon Jane. This is my FTT114 week for uh, practical application. I don't remember if it's assignment one or two. They didn't label them as practical applications in this class. They label them as assignments. So it's either assignment one or two for week four. Anyways, it's the continuation of our Kydex holster build, uh, finishing it up. So uh, as a reminder, if you didn't watch it, go back and watch the first video uh, where we get to this point. But this is where we're at. Okay. So this is the Kydex uh, holster for the SIG P320X5 Legion with a TLR1 light attached to it. And it is optics ready. Um, and we put the Legion symbol on there. Still not sure if we're gonna paint it. Probably gonna paint it, uh, but. So this week we're going to add our retention screws. We're going to add our tech lock um, belt, uh, whatever, belt, belt loop. There we go, belt loop thing. And we're going to do some final shaping and cleaning um, of the this back part here with the heat gun just so that uh, it doesn't catch anything when you're going to put it in and we'll run it through the buffer and it will be done by the end of this video and stay tuned to the end of the video because there might be some bonus bonus, bonus, bonus. stuff in there so stay tuned because you'll see okay so we need to mark out our holes uh, for our retention screws and for our retention, um, this is for the fat big boy rivets. This is for the skinny little boy rivets, wherever they're at, over here. And then also for the retention uh, screws, they're little as well. So we'll be using the 3 sixteenths for our holes here. Um, these holes here, let's see, what is tech lock? They're also skinny. So we'll be using just the 3 16 to do this. Now, interestingly enough, um, there are no rivets in this one. So part of the assignment is to do the rivets. So with that being said, stay tuned. We'll figure out a way to make sure we get some rivets. Bonus. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and use this now. Um, I told you before I use, this is a great tool for spacing out stuff too. So if you see there, I can lay this out and use every other one and get a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, standardized screw location. So I can use this, you know, if I'm doing uh, the sheath with the other, with the drop belt loop on it, um, I can use it on here. Uh, but since these are known distance apart from each other, which I, I believe they're three quarters of an inch. I can't remember what I set them to, but I'm pretty sure it's three quarters of an inch. I Googled like standard rivet distance between and like three websites said like three quarters of an inch. So that's what I went with. But I, I, you know, it's arbitrary, like I said before. So what I'm going to do here, actually I'm going to use this so I don't leave white all over this. I'm going to just space this so that it makes sense to me. Right about there, I put a little dot and a little dot. And there's where I'm going to drill that one. Now, as I stated before, these are already marked because I made that neat little jig. So I don't need to do anything but drill these. So I will drill all nine of these little holes and uh, we'll be able to attach everything. Uh, so, let me just do that leg. there we go. Um, yep, there we go. So let's head out to the garage and go ahead and get this drilled. We're gonna drill these two spots and these nine spots. And uh, to drill these two, I'm gonna take a little piece of that plexiglass that we had and just put it right between there. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I don't want a straight hole when it's together. I want a straight hole when it's a quarter inch apart. Um, because that's the space of the deal that's supposed to be in there. So 
if that makes sense. Just, just follow along. All right, that's all I can reach. Um, there's a tool you can get where you can push it in and it turns like a triangle and then you can you can get the insides of these lower holes. Uh, I'll probably just get them with a, a knife or something like that, but. So there we go, there's all of our holes on the back for our tech lock and the holes for our retention system. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna run this over uh, to the uh, buffer and I'm just gonna buff these edges a little bit more uh, Try and get out some of the little little itty bitty defects that are left there and Then I'll meet you back downstairs and we'll put in our hardware Since I had the camera set up out here, I'm gonna go ahead and do this right here um, I just ran this through the buffer again and If you see when I mean a dry buffer, I mean Put a dry buffing wheel on, don't add any compound, and use that dry wheel to do your kydex. It throws fuzz everywhere because there's nothing on the wheel, but man, it leaves a really nice, shiny, crisp, clean edge on all of it. So it looks real factory, it looks nice, so. Okay, so I've been talking about how I wanted to kind of peel this out as a place for your thumb to push the holster away but also so it doesn't catch anything when it's going in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my gloves on and I'm gonna turn on my heat gun. Now I only wanna heat this last little tiny lip right here. So I'm just gonna, a little bit there. Quick check. Yep, we're starting to get a little bit of pliability. So I'm just gonna. It's not a lot, it's just a little tiny bit that you wanna do it. I'm just gonna hold that till it, till it kinda, that little bit of a lip right there. I'm just gonna hold that till it cools a little bit. There you go. That's exactly what I was looking for right there. So with the heat gun, there's a lot of things you can do if you have too much retention. You just have to be careful with a heat gun because if you start shooting this with a heat gun, it'll it'll all relax and you'll lose all of your detail. So you just want to hit just just the little parts that you want to do. You don't don't want to aim it at any one particular part. If I aimed it at this little chevron right here, it would just it would just relax back into it. You'd lose all of that. We've got our holster and our tech lock and all of our uh, hardware. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach our tech lock, just open it up. Um, so this is adjustable. I could carry it under my arm like this. Uh, I could carry it, you know, on my belt like this. I think I've been looking at, and I think I'm going to raise it up one. Uh, so in order to do that, we're going to take our Chicago screws I'm gonna go ahead and avoid this one just because of how thin that is. I don't really want to break through it. Uh, so we're gonna put our Chicago screws. And we're gonna put some rubber spacers in there. Just to offset it a little bit. Away from the belt. And so tech lock you can do either way. You can do upside down 
uh, and slide it up into your belt, which is good because then you have access. Um, I'm going to do it this way. It gives me a better way to undo this bottom part here. So either way. All right. So then we're going to line those up and get our screws in place here. Be easier with a little screw gun but can't bring it inside so old-fashioned now I'm not going to tight I'm just going down so I can still move this around a little bit Fathead gets in the way. Alright, now that they're all in place and they got the rubber washers, I can tighten them down a little bit. And once I decide that this is where I want it to be, uh, then you can go back with some uh, Loctite. Don't use the permanent, just use the uh, semi-permanent or temporary. All right, so that's in, that's in place. I don't know what you got going on here. Oh, the belt thing's in the way. There we go. Okay, let's take those in. There's our back on nice and secure and again you'll notice the hardware is nowhere in line where the pistol is going to be next we're going to put in the retention adjustment screws um, I think I like the, the back better so we'll, we'll push the backs in from the front so that's the side you'll see so the adjustment will be on the inside and just spread that apart a little bit put your little rubber washers over it now the thumb piece that I talked about how it's off to the side there so this when it's going down in just slides right past that all right and that's a pretty sharp looking holster huh that's pretty sharp. So just crank this down just a little bit. with acetone let's do this no guts no glory right So I'm not gonna film myself spray painting it. I'm just gonna let you know. I'm gonna go back out to the garage. I'm gonna take a little rag and just acetone this little piece just to get my fingernail or finger 
oils off of it. Then I'm gonna take some flat black spray paint and I'm gonna spray this symbol on here. All right, wish me luck. If this is works, the next scene should be the dried image of it. So here we go. Let's find out. I went ahead and did a couple coats of black and a couple coats of UV resistant clear just because. So here we go. Fast forward. Well, what do you know? Look at that. Dang. Dang. Looks pretty sharp. Looks pretty sharp. I'd say that's about done. I'm pretty proud of that. All right, we are finished now with the Kydex Lab. This is the finished product. It is a SIG P320 X5 Legion outer waistband carry uh, with the TLR1 light with a raised Legion logo painted on there. <laughs> I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's got good retention, but it comes in and out nicely. Um, just overall happy with everything here. Uh, I will tell you if you're taking this course, do not wait till you're taking the course to prepare for it, okay? Um, if, you're, if this course is coming up for you next, then you need to start now uh, getting everything together. Learn from my mistakes. Don't use PVC um, for your flashlight uh, as much as it is the right shape the heat, the extended amount of heat on it. Um, you might get one use out of it. I would recommend maybe getting a big inch and a half dowel rod or, um, you know, inch dowel rod. Nah, probably inch and a half. And then also maybe look at some pipe if you want to go into that, um, you know, metal wise. I'm not sure what I'll do. Probably HDPE plastic would probably work. Um, just something that doesn't have as low of a melting point as PVC. PVC's melting point, I should have thought about, is pretty similar to Kydex's. So, um, so let's look at it one more time here. We've got our retention. Okay, adjusted. Flashlight. This is our retention point right here. It's adjusting right there. Um, there's the logo. Raised up. Uh, here's the back, nice definition. We use the tech lock. Okay, here's our failing one. This is the one where the PVC started to fail, which is why it's all sunk in here. So, uh, you know, I don't have any regrets for trying a two layer, you know, it, it, it is what it is, it's cool, you know. You're gonna fail as many times as you're gonna succeed, right? So, uh, but that being said, thanks for this course and uh, thanks for watching my videos and uh, enjoy what you see next. Thanks. Okay, everyone, let's get started. Yes, beautiful, feeling it. Let's get some smiles, it's all in here. That's it, yes. Let's let the inside out. Okay, you're an animal. Yes, there we go, you're a tiger. You're Tony the tiger. You're Great! Very good. Loving it. Now you're a lemma. Running as a pack. Yes, yes, we go left. We go right. Yes, yes, yes. There's a predator out of the jungle. What's going on? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Burrow! Burrow! That's right, you're a lemma. It's all you've got. You don't have sharp teeth capable of biting. Make an interconnected series of tunnels like the Viet Cong. And look, 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 look. I'm not even shooting you. It's crazy. And I'm spent.
Bonus. 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 Your bonus. My bonus.
Next day, I really like how this is turning out. I just, I have to fix this um, retention point is just way, 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 way too abrupt. You know, I should have known better. So I gotta fix this. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do though, is I'm going to drill these holes right here. And that way I can rivet these eight holes. Once I rivet that, I can take these apart and cut down the middle and I can deal with just this side. So uh, if you're wondering what my plan is, that's my plan. Uh, so here we go. You know, I think half of the reason I decided to make a second holster was so I could show off my rivet press. Um, this is something I built uh, that's a little unique. You're not gonna see any other one like it. Um, this is the Harbor Freight, um, Harbor Freight Arbor Press, okay? The only difference between mine and everybody else's that I did, so. All right, so take this out. There is a threaded hole right here on the side. That is for the key to lock in the um, oh, riveting tools, okay? So I bought the set that you get off of knife kits that comes, you've seen this, other people using these too. Um, it comes with this and it comes with, let's see, the big one the small riveting one, and then the big and small caps. Uh, before that, I used to use this one uh, for the small one. So it's the same set as this. Uh, this one, however, was meant for an arbor press. Um, and that's what I, that's the only one I had for a long time. Uh, now I use this in reverse. And what I do is, um, I use it for stamps, so if I'm gonna stamp something, I can put that on there, and then I can push down to stamp things, so. Um, so basically, what happens is you put this inside of here. Okay, so modifications to the press itself. I don't know if I can get this off of here. So these are just half inch holes. So this is, oh, huh, that's not even true. Okay, so see how it does that? Like a ratcheting, so you can, so let's say you're in the wrong place to get real good pressure, you can come up and ratchet. Like, oh, I want it from here. You can ratchet down. The way you do that is, I don't know if you can see right here, and you can go on YouTube and look up modifications to these arbor presses but you see i ground off the teeth right here on this this last little part the only effect that has is that when it goes all the way up it gets to a point where it starts skipping teeth and that allows you to ratchet to wherever you want to go to to bring it down okay so so that's the first mod um i shortened this and the reason i did that was because my old drill press didn't go very low and i needed to cut it off in order to drill the hole in the end. So there's a hole drilled in the end, a half inch hole that fits these uh, keys here. So that just goes up inside of there. Then you can take the um, quarter 20 bolt and it'll hold in if you just hand tighten it, but I usually keep this little wrench here and just give it a little, little tighten like that. There's a magnet back there that I stick everything to. So it's got uh, the old snap anvil that it you know, for doing snaps or whatever. And then uh, that, and that just sticks back there. Okay, <clears throat> this plate is just another piece. Same type of stuff as what I got over here, this half inch plate here. Um, this was just a piece of that same industrial uh, off cuts, okay. I drilled a slightly undersized quarter inch hole and then wedged a quarter inch um, piece of, well, what I use it for is, um, pins for knife stock, but it's just a piece of, um, 
stainless quarter inch rod, okay? It's in the exact point where the spinning mechanism that used to be here was. So now when I put this down and it finds its little hole, it sits in there and doesn't move at all. So this does not spin, there's no spinning there. So that's solid. And then I these can be moved to wherever because they're all the same length. The bottom of these caps right here are half inch, which is the same as this. So if you make these half inch holes, you can uh, set up all of your little anvils in the back here and then set up the uh, drivers that go to them. So I usually do that. And we're gonna be using the fat one today, so we'll set that one up, uh, which is, oh, it's already in there. It's confused there for a minute. So that one goes there. I'm gonna set these ones down. There. So now everything's in place. I just keep that little American flag back there because I stamped that one a lot. Okay. So now we can adjust this so that we're, boom, that's right, right where I like it. So I'm glad because they ratcheted that a bunch. So now what I do is I bring my kydex in here, boom, like that, and we're set to jet. So that is my uh, kydex press deal or whatever. Okay. Cut these apart now. Uh, we're just gonna put these rivets, we're gonna rivet these together so that I can figure out what I'm doing here. Uh, I want, where do I want the nice ones? Not that they won't both be nice, but I think I'm gonna do it like that. Okay, so all I'm going to do is bring this in Set it on the little anvil. Oh, need to get away. Bring that down there. And that will curl it right over the top. Okay, super, super simple. Top part is riveted, okay. And we'll do this one. Should be able to reach in for this one, so let's go ahead and try this. So you can get the full demonstration. Someday I'd like to have a dedicated Kydex working area where I can mount all my tools to the table so that I don't have to brace them when I'm wrenching on them. That'd be fantastic. go. So now those will line up and that'll be how those two things lace together once I get them trimmed up and everything. Let's take our magazine out of there. Alright, so there's our rivets for now. Next thing we're going to worry about is... <sighs> so basically my plan is... And this is a terrible plan. I'm going to heat this back up as much as I can, inside, outside, all this other stuff, okay? Till I feel like, and I might lose some of this definition here. Go with me on the process. I'm gonna change the block in here and add a block into the middle part here so that this is just, just ever so slightly below the surface, 
just a little bit, right? So I'll probably use some of this plexiglass. I think two layers of that would be just about perfect. So I'm gonna block inside of here. Then I'm gonna put this back into this and then I'm going to squish it down in the press and hopefully when that's hot, it'll, it'll push out that bubble. If that doesn't work, this is a loss, okay? But um, if the next thing you see me doing is putting this in the press, it worked. Got my holster to start melting stuff on. Got this re-blocked. I needed two layers of the quarter inch plus a piece of that little thin aluminum right between them. And it should give me just the right amount that I need right there to push out that bubble. So, I'm still at retention. Trick is, I have to heat this up. We gotta heat this up as minimum amount focused on this area. I've attached the attachment to make this smaller. Um, got this just in case, but really I think I should be able to tell. I'm gonna go ahead and put my gloves on. And thank goodness for this fast vise because once we get it in there, we're gonna try and squish it down. All right, so we're ready. Fast forward. Okay. I'm stopping because it's already relaxed out. So I should be in a good position. Oh, come on, don't do this to me. be in a good position to drop this down and clamp it in. Man, that vice is slick, huh? Bam! Moment of truth. I looked in the video before I looked in there. Oh yeah, that looks good. All right, so we can still see a little outline of the trigger, which is kind of what I wanted. It's not really even the actual trigger. There's, I put those uh, blocks for the aluminum. Um, so really, I think, especially with the retention plate now, this is going to be perfect. All of this heat speculate, this is what happened if you overheat your Kydex. So if I can get the light there. See that speckly right there? Oh, it's bubbly. There you go. That's bad, but look, it's on the part that we're cutting off, so we're good. I don't think I have to say this, but pull your gun out before you start cutting your Kydex, just in case. The rest of this shaping I'm going to do on the band sander or with the Dremel or whatever else, but this gives us a real basic where we're looking at. So, looking pretty good so far.
I can't tell you how much it pays to have a belt sander, okay? Uh, even if you gotta go to Harbor Freight and buy yourself one of these little cheap jobbies, these little uh, one by 30s, get yourself a belt sander. I mean, you can make real quick work. You get nice, really nice clean shapes. Um, you know, all I gotta do now is basically cut this across over to here to get rid of that front part. And uh, once we rivet it together, we'll, we'll bend these just a little bit just to give it that kind of around the body shape. Um, but overall, I mean, look how fast we were able to shape those those down from rough cut on the bandsaw. So do that. We're going to drill out our remaining spots here. There and these ones here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 spots that we got to drill out. Plus the ones on this one, which is 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 spots. Um, and then we'll start cleaning it up. I went ahead and cut that down with the Dremel tool and then just kind of sanded it. Everything is rough right now. Uh, once I get these holes drilled in and kind of cleaned up, I won't be adding any more rivets uh, until I can get the hardware in there. If I didn't explain this little spot right here, uh, that's the retention spot for the magazine. So once we put the rubber in there, that will spread this apart and we'll be able to basically uh, determine the retention on your magazine from there. So, okay. So, let's get to drilling. All right, well, that got rid of some of the white that I need to figure out how to get off of all of this, so I think I wanna adjust this one here and bring that up a little bit so that it lines up evenly with that one. So I'm gonna sand that back down. Uh, I'm gonna clean it up a little bit on the buffing wheel and then uh, we'll meet back downstairs and we will start figuring out some hardware. I realized that I didn't show you what I was calling the dry buffing technique. See, this is a dry buffing wheel. This is just a motor. Uh, I probably got it at a yard sale or I don't know, off the side of the road or something like that. Um, you, don't, you don't need, you know, an expensive buffer for this. This little thing here, you probably get on Amazon. I don't know what's called buffing wheel deal. Basically, all it is, I'm pretty sure it's not called a buffing wheel deal, but anyways, this little pokey thing, when you put this on there, the spinning rotation of the motor sucks this up to the buffer. And um, this, the only thing that matters is that your buffer spins down away from you. You, you want the motor to spin down, not up, so that when you, if you catch something, it doesn't throw it into you, it throws it down away from you. Um, so now that you see my super ugly buff, and just look, just so we're tracking here, every tool you've seen in my shop, I probably got off of Facebook Marketplace or, you know, yard sales or estate sales or Harbor Freight or whatever. Uh, if you're thinking you can't do this because you don't have this Arbor Press or you don't have a welder or whatever, you know, I think I got that welder for like $120 off of Facebook Marketplace late one night. So. Uh, you know, keep a little extra cash in your hand. And, you know, for those of you using your GI Bill for this program, they give you $1,000 a month for tools, man. Use it. So um, I'm going to kick this on in just a second, and I'm going to show you how we will turn these edges here, these rough edges, into nice, shiny, smooth edges. So here we go. So you'll see how rough this edge is right here. And all I'm gonna do is just kinda 
Yeah. And it's gonna get fuzz caught all up on it. Don't worry about it. See, look out, look at that. It's just so shiny and smooth now. Phew. I mean, it gets hot and it melts it a little bit. And, and what that does is this this is still real rough from that rough sanding belt. And, and all I gotta do is just run it on there for a second. And now it's just perfectly smooth and shiny, like real professional looking, you know? So, and then you, you, what you do is you just take it and run it along that edge there and it'll soften up that edge give it a nice chamfer right along that edge there yeah it throws fuzz all over the place so that's easy to wipe off I mean, look at that. That's like, like one piece now. Smooth across there. But you gotta be careful you don't do it too much because it will melt it, you know? And you still want crisp edges you just want them rounded over. Especially since this is an inside the waistband holster, you don't want it to be abrasive against your skin. My wife's super sensitive too. It's offended at everything. So what I'm doing is I'm as I'm doing this I'm rubbing all these edges to see, see if feel if there's anything rough or jagged or anything like that that could possibly dig into your skin or anything like that and this one this one's feeling real good so all right so then off to the side all right this is look look so so this has got real sharp edges there's a real sharp edge right there real rough right here rough um, down in here, and all we're gonna do is just run this over the buffer. Looks like I could get a little more. So I was doing that, I noticed this little crack right here between the two layers. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there's a little crack. So I pushed up on the rivet and I realized there's a tiny bit of space in this rivet. So all I'm gonna do is, is just put it back on here real quick. Actually, this is the fire one. So I'm gonna take this out here. Out 
So I don't know if you can see, but there's just a little bit of space underneath the lip of this. So I'm just gonna slip that on there. And give that a good whack. Boom, closed up that gap. Okay. And now that looks like one piece. And what I'm doing there is I'm easing the inside edge where the gun slides down in, I'm just putting a heavier chamfer on that inside edge so that uh, it, it slides in a little easier. I gotta finish this project so I can clean up my freaking work area. It's getting out of control. So, some good news and some bad news. Good news is this is turning out great. Bad news is I don't have all the hardware I want for this. And by that I mean I don't have um, any more retention squishy things. What are they called? Retention whatever's. Put it up in the video, Talon. Uh, so, I tried to stack a few of these and do it like that. Uh, however, the screw that I'm trying to use wasn't long enough. So we're gonna go ahead and move forward and get as much of it done as we can. Uh, so, well, I didn't have enough hardware to finish this holster, which is disappointing. Um, I think it turned out great. It looks really, really nice. I really like the way it looks. Um, all that I need is, I don't even have enough rivets to do the rivets, because I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do the large one. So I have four more, I need five. I need a retention screw for that. I need retention screws over here. And then, uh, then it'll be done. And this needs a third hole because I realized why this has three really close holes now. One is to, secure this, the other two you can use for the retention. So um, otherwise I was able to attach the belt loops for it. And so that's one issue uh, finished or whatever. Um, but at least you got to see how a inside the waistband um, holster for a MMP shield with a laser uh, blocked and also with a sidecar for a um, magazine. And then the, um, I, can't, I think they call these hooks or whatever, but uh, hooked for reducing your printing. So that's done. We got this finished. This was the over the waistband. Um, gray Kydex with the Sig Legion. And then I just showed you this one. This is a pocket holster, super simple pocket holster uh, for the SIG P365. So pocket, outer waistband, uh, inside the waistband, uh, what is it, IWB. So IWB, OWB, pocket. Yeah, I just wanted to say one more thing. Um, if you're getting into this holster stuff, you gotta check out this channel, Faltech Unlimited LLC. Um, if you ever get it, if you ever see this, uh, you know, Faltech Unlimited, uh, you're honestly the best channel for Kydex there is on the entire YouTube. I've watched probably a dozens of your videos. Um, if you're wanting to do your project for the schoolhouse, go to his channel, watch him make 20, 30, 40 holsters. Look at how he does his blocking. He's fast. He makes me look super slow, especially when it comes to the blocking. Um, 
Yeah, very, very knowledgeable. Shares all of his knowledge, talks about how to do vacuum forming, how to do the press, you know, uh, talks about forms, you name it. Uh, absolutely awesome channel, Faltech Unlimited LLC. Thanks again, really appreciate it. Uh, talk to you guys later.